Okay, in this video we're going to take a look at another Riemann sum, but this time we're going to calculate the lower Riemann sum using five rectangles. Uh, now I know what you're thinking, you probably say, well, there's only four there. Well, the other one's just kind of hidden down here, and you can see if I move move my interval in a little bit, that fifth triangle, fifth rectangle pops into existence, but as soon as I go to to one, the height of that, that fifth rectangle disappears. So what I'm interested in calculating is the area, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in estimating the area that's bounded by the curve, the x-axis, and the y-axis. Okay, and it turns out the interval that that occurs on is from 0 to 1. Okay, in the previous video we looked at the upper sum. You could see that these rectangles overestimate the area. We actually used the left-hand endpoint uh, to calculate the height of these rectangles. And in the lower estimate, it looks like we're going to use the right-hand endpoint. Now, this isn't always the case. Um, in other words, right-hand endpoints of rectangles don't always um, underestimate the area. Uh, in other words, if I had a, if I just changed my function here to, to plus instead, look what happens. Okay, notice that we still have a lower sum, but now the height of my rectangle is a uh, is a left-hand endpoint okay as opposed to a right-hand endpoint and that that actually matters when you're setting up your series so you have to determine am I dealing with a right-hand endpoint or a left-hand endpoint so let's let's turn this back into what it is and you can see that we went back to a right-hand endpoint and I just mean that the the rectangle touches the curve on the right endpoint that's all I mean by that Okay, so how do we how do we set this up? Well, as usual with any Riemann sum, I like to identify the width and the height of each of each rectangle. Now, how do you get the width? Well, you take the overall interval, which was one in our case. We went from zero to one, and we divided that interval up into five equal uh, segments. We're going to use rectangles of equal width. Okay, the height of our rectangle. The height of the rectangle uh, usually is a little bit trickier to get, but it's not too bad. Um, well, what's the height of this first rectangle? You can see that here's zero, and how far out do we come this way? Well, hopefully you said one-fifth, because that's the width of this rectangle, and f of one-fifth is going to be the height of that rectangle. Okay, so it looks like the height of my first rectangle. Let's do this, uh, just want to make this point here. The first rectangle, the height is f of one-fifth. Well, how about the second rectangle? Well, the second rectangle is right here. It's this purple guy, and here's f of zero. f of zero doesn't tell us anything, um, but f of one-fifth tells us the height of the first rectangle. f of two-fifths tells us the height of the second rectangle. I'm going to write it slightly differently though. If I really want f of two-fifths, isn't that the same as one-fifth multiplied by two? That's really f of two-fifths. Well, the third rectangle is f of my width. Let's just go back to the picture one more time. Here's the third rectangle. Here's one-fifth, here's two-fifths, here's three-fifths. So the height of the, the third rectangle then is f of one-fifth times three. Now hopefully you see the pattern, and the fourth rectangle is going to be f of one-fifth times what? Hopefully you said four. And to be complete, let's just do the last one. The height of my fifth rectangle is one-fifth times five. Okay, so there you go. So what is what is a general expression that we can use to to maybe talk about the height of any one of these rectangles? Well, you can see that the height of any rectangle is going to be f of the width multiplied by the number of the rectangle that I'm on. If I want the height of the second rectangle, I multiply the width by 2. If I want the height of the third rectangle, I multiply the height by 3. So we can write 1 fifth i where i is my index. And 
i is going to take on values from 1 all the way to 5. Okay, so now we can write our sum. Now we can take all of these, these areas and add them all up. And we're starting from 1, and we're going to 5, and the height of my, my rectangle, uh, let, me, let me go ahead and write the function up here. This is 1 minus, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, I should say f of x equals 1 minus x squared. There we go. And now all I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute that guy in for x right here. And by doing that, I'm just describing the height of my rectangle a little bit more explicitly. Okay, so what is the height? The height of any given rectangle is going to be 1 minus my input squared. And what is my input? Well, my input is 1 fifth i. Okay, so this right here represents what? What does that represent right there? Hopefully, you said the height. And the way you find area of rectangles is you take the height and you multiply it by the width. And the width of every rectangle is one-fifth. So this guy right here represents the width of each one of my rectangles. Okay, the, the only thing left to do really is to calculate this series. Okay, and uh, I don't want to get lost, I don't want to get hung up too much um, in the, the arithmetic here, so I'll, I'm going to skip some steps here, but if you simplify this, you should get the following. You should get the series from 1 to 5. Now all I'm doing is I'm squaring this and I'm subtracting 1 from it and uh, at the very same time I'm going to be multiplying by 1 fifth. So I'm, I'm basically just crunching some algebra, crunching some numbers here and you should get the following. You should get uh, 1 fifth minus 1 over 125i squared. Okay, I hope I hope I didn't lose anybody right there. Again, all I did was I just I just crunched these operations up here. Okay, now what we're going to do next is we're just going to use our properties of our uh, of our sigma here to kind of split up this sum, or in this case, a difference. So I'm going to split this up into the following. I have the sum from 1 to 5 of 1 fifth minus, now watch what I can do. I'm going to make this its own sum, but at the same time I'm going to pull that, that constant out in front. That's a, that's a property of, of sigma that, that's legal to do. And what I'm left with inside is i squared. Okay. So now, hopefully you remember your formulas uh, that allow us to calculate these, these sums. Well, the sum of a constant, if you're going from 1 to, to a number, the series of this constant is simply going to be the, the product of these two numbers. So this guy right here, this sum simply equals 5 times 1 fifth, which is just 1, minus 1 over 125 and if you look in any calculus book, you can find a formula that tells you how to sum i squared going from 1 to really any number. And this, this number up here in, in your book might be called n. And that formula is n, which is 5, times n plus 1, times 2n plus 1. Uh, I'll just put 11. 2, 2n plus 1 is, is 11. That's horrible. Let me, let me redo that. Okay, I'm going to write 11. And again, I got this 11 by, by, just by the formula. So again, n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1, where n in this case is equal to 5, and then your formula says divide it by 6. Okay, if you crunch these numbers here, do the arithmetic, you should get, uh, you should get 14... 14 over 25, and this is, 
this is the underestimate this is the lower sum to to this area under this curve okay where before the upper sum uh, was an overestimate the lower sum is an underestimate now in the next video what we're going to do is we're going to let the number of rectangles okay go to infinity and we're going to actually calculate the the actual area underneath that curve see you there